All right, I'd like to talk about using the SOS amplifier as a microphone preamp. Now, first things first, you'll notice that it is on. And in the last video, I had the speaker hooked up to this output. This is the speaker output. And normally, you would never run a tube amp without a speaker uh, load on it. However, these came stock in the old uh, reel recorders with a switchable jack connected to an 8 ohm lo dummy load. And so I've, uh, I've just left that in there. I've uh, incorporated that into the output here. So when you have no speaker plug plugged in here, it's uh, dropping the uh, output transformer onto that dummy load and keeping uh, operation safe uh, for using it without the speaker plugged in. It's not the same thing, though, if you were to have the speaker cable plugged in and the other end not plugged into a load, into a, a speaker. That would be a different story. But anyway, with that out of the way, um, I just want to talk about the microphone preamp options here. So uh, first things first, I've got my Shure SM7 uh, plugged into straight into the XLR input. And as I mentioned in the other video, this lower switch right here uh, switches between the XLR and the quarter inch input on that combo jack. So if I were to switch it over, it'll kill the input here. And we get nothing, right? Uh, we then have a pad switch right above that. So if I pad it, pad, 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 and bring up the volume so you can hear it a little bit. The SM7 does not need a pad. Uh, the uh, next switch is a phase switch. So here's uh, the phase switch in the up position, phase switch in the down position, phase switch in the up position. And then, of course, this is the volume control for the EF86 tube that we're using with that XLR input. And now, in the past, Wait a second, before I, get, before I move on to that, uh, we also have the tone control here, which we can either engage or disengage. Right now it's disengaged, right? And so if we were to engage it, we can then brighten up our signal. Brighten it, brighten it. We can also darken it. We can cut those highs. We can leave it somewhere in the middle, or we can just disengage it. Now, um, in the past, I've used this output going straight into my uh, Tascam Model 12 uh, interface mixer and uh, had really good results. Um, but I've included in this amplifier a uh, cathode follower output from the mixing half of the 12AX7. So uh, that allows us to get a nice low impedance output um, of the mixed signal, so that means that, of course, just like with the um, other demo video going into the speaker with the guitars, we can mix multiple signals and take the output off of that cathode follower right there. So once again, I'm going to hook up my little radio. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put it into the line level input and bring that up. So we've got the input from my vocal and the input from the radio. Instead of just watching your dollars go into your tank, start... And, of course, we have the tone knob here. We can filter our white noise, or we can switch it over to the vocal, and we're filtering the vocal. All right, so that's cool. I like that. And of course, just like with the other demo video using uh, it for guitars, we can take a little jumper cable. and change this over from mixing input to cascading input. So this is going to cut my signal. And now we're back. And so, of course, we have a pre and post, so we can start to 
back this off pretty low and back this up really hot. And maybe we'll actually, let's put that over there. Yeah. We can start to get a bit more overdriven vocal. And actually, I'm going to back off on the mixer here a little bit so that you can hear it really get kind of crunchy. All right, let's bump that up, bump that up. Bump that up when it's really driving in both tubes. That's what it sounds like. Pretty neat. And then, of course, we can back this up. And then, I don't know if I'll go into it too much, but you can start to play some really interesting games with how you set this knob and the volume knob here. You can sort of back this way off and turn this way up and you get a real cut in lows. Uh, and of course you can sort of control the volume of that here so you, you get a very uh, high pass kind of sound like that. And then of course we start backing this off. We start bringing this up. We compensate. We get much more lows with a configuration like this. Check, check, check. Check, check. Anyway, you could play with that all day. But, yeah. And then, of course, we have a level control here for the line output. I've been leaving it just kind of wide open because that feels good. And what have I forgotten? I think that's it. Of course, uh, well, we could pad, could pad that. But, like I said, the SM7 doesn't need a lot of padding on its way to the first preamp tube. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, most, that's most of it right there. So, uh, yeah, using it as a microphone preamp, dummy load on the speaker, and we're coming out of the cathode follower of the mixing side of the 12AX7. And this volume control right here is your 12AX7. This volume control right here is your EF86 quarter inch or XLR switch, pad, and phase, phase, phase. All right, excellent. Thanks a bunch.